Walid, and it's all run from the command center of his empire, a two-story building in downtown Riyadh. The corporation is called Kingdom. On the second floor, the power and the glory. So we used to ask people how they made their first million dollars. How did you make your first billion? First billion or million? Billion. Yeah. Well, you know, I began with, my father gave me $30,000. 30 grand. And gave me a very he did it, billion. the prince will tell you, the Saudi way. Whenever a contract is awarded in the kingdom, some member of the royal family gets a commission. In America, it would be called a kickback. The prince also made some shrewd real estate deals. And then, with the $600 million he'd accumulated, he invested in Citicorp shares, which he thought were undervalued. And he was right. You worth how much today? 20 billion. 20 billion. A bit below that, you know. You're not quite up to the 20 billion figure mm. yet. No, well, when actually I was, but now it went below. It's tough. Tough, but not that tough. This is the prince's palace, 317 rooms, finished two years ago at a cost of more than $100 million. You like the house? Nice house. I go right there. Nice, but it takes a long time to get anywhere. Up and down is easy. There are a dozen elevators. Along and across is hard. And since the prince is a busy man, one of his assistants is on hand to offer a guided tour. Inside the palace walls, she can dress the way she would on Rodeo Drive. Just on the other side, she'd have to be covered in black from head to toe. How long does it take you to get to know your way around here? About two months. And while the prince has a fully equipped gym, it's not entirely necessary. A power walk through his wardrobe provides enough exercise for all but the most ambitious. And here we have... A private cinema is a must because there are no public cinemas in Saudi Arabia. If you want to go to the movies, you have to stay at home. In Saudi Arabia, public entertainment of any kind is against the law. Cooking is not one of the prince's hobbies, but he does have a kitchen. And these are the Highness's fridges? Exactly. For the royal snacks? Yes. Lots of fruit. There are 17 dining rooms, and since the palace is not that far from the office, the prince comes home every day for lunch. And every day, a different dining room. Today, the table is set next to the pool, one of his indoor pools. Among the guests today, and most every day, his personal physician and full-time hairdresser. Also at the lunch, but we weren't allowed to film her, was his 24-year-old third wife. His courtiers are here too, dozens of men whose job is simply to hang out with the prince. After lunch, the prince dispenses largesse to a selected group of Saudis' neediest. Then coffee is served in the jungle room. The prince decorated this one himself. I, I like hunting a lot. And all the animals we have here, zebras, tigers, you know, giraffes, but all these animals were really hunted by, by me and my family. Every animal here was hunted? A single animal and had a picture under it also. So no one could dispute this. Do you remember anything about these fellows? No. These, these are really just very passive. They don't just, just come and say, kill me. Well, they got what they asked for. <laughs> yeah. The prince likes his home, likes his life. He is a happy man. And that, he says, is what he has in common with the people of Saudi Arabia, happiness. At the end of the day, I'm happy and my people are happy. I have nothing to hide. I'm, I'm happy. I don't feel guilty at all. I'm perfectly prepared to believe that you're happy, Prince. There's very little reason I'm for not you not to be. I'm not guilty also. Okay. But when you tell me that the majority of the people in Saudi Arabia are happy, how do you know that? I know that because I interact with them a lot. And you know, Saudi Arabia is, 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 a, is a country that's stable that has no problems. Prince, if I'm not mistaken, you just said to me that Saudi Arabia is a country with no problems? What I'm telling you, Saudi Arabia has no civil unrest, no civil disobedience, sorry. Saudi Arabia is a very stable country. Sure, you had these, uh, you know, yeah, we had these bombs here and there, but they're all related to a certain subject. Well, Saudi Arabia, if you'll permit me, sir, has no civil unrest because there's so many cops around. People are afraid, would be afraid to go out on the street. You couldn't demonstrate. Did you see them in the street? If you wanted to. Did you see them in the street? My question is, if they did go to the street, yeah. how many minutes would it be before they'd be arrested? No, no, they would not be. They would not be going because it's, it's the system in Saudi Arabia and most Arab countries does not allow demonstrations because this may create this, this civil disobedience. Obviously, uh, it's not allowed in Saudi Arabia. I acknowledge that. But you know, the bulk of Saudis are not upset. They're happy with what's going, with what's going on in Saudi Arabia.
But if they weren't happy, how would you know it? They wouldn't come talk to you. No, look, uh, you don't have direct polling. But in my particular case, I can claim that I have my own polling. And you'll see that in the desert on Thursday. On Thursday, we went to the desert, which since biblical times has been the place to stay in touch with the universe. And the prince certainly does that. He's surrounded by satellite dishes and giant television screens, all set up by a man who used to run communications for the White House. The desert was lit up by a bonfire and by dozens of spotlights revealing falcons and camels and a feast fit for a prince. The vast silence of the desert was broken only by the wail of mobile phones and by voices from America. Ours will be a broad campaign, thought on many fronts. But this is what the prince really wanted to show us. This is where the action was. Hundreds of people, men only of course, gathered inside a tent the size of a football field. They were all waiting to see His Royal Highness. It happens every week and goes on for hours. An ancient Saudi tradition called a majlis or assembly. Every man gets to see the prince, gets to present a petition asking for assistance for a house or a car or for medical treatment abroad. Dozens of princes, including Crown Prince Abdullah, his uncle who runs the country, do the same thing. It's what the royal family calls democracy Saudi style. You seem to be dealing with people from very different walks of life. Huh? What do you mean? I mean, some people don't look poor at all. Well, you know, uh, uh, most of them are poor people, but when they come here, obviously, they come, you know, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the assumption that this is a very important occasion in their life and career. It's like going, uh, for example, in the United States, someone going to the White House, meeting George Bush or meeting some uh, the Secretary of Treasury, for example. Is there any significance to kissing the right shoulder? It's out of respect. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you've got a reputation of being generous. Perhaps. I love it. I, 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 it's a duty. I love, I love this. I love this. I adore it. And look at them. They all love me. I love them. Look from their heart. That's an incredible form of democracy. And if you want to hear how deeply they love the prince and the royal family, listen to the poetry. Men come from all over the kingdom to praise the prince. Al-Walid, however, seemed to have other things on his mind. But this man caught the prince's attention. He came to express his views on the man who humiliated the prince, the mayor of New York. Oh, Giuliani. Giuliani, you may not want to hear this, he says, but damn you, you lowlife, you're a lackey of the Jews. That is what he said. <laughs> the story will continue.